are off camera, yeah. and if we can't see yeah. you, why are you screaming Detroit. about UConn? UConn don't matter. This is my guy right here. Take, baby. We talk about relevant stuff here, all right? Dan Orlovsky had the audacity, the unmitigated goal to try to show up against me. Hey, Elvis, how you doing? Oh, <laughs> oh, right away. You're taking the house. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Lamar hasn't won one against you yet. You know that he's going to go out there and put up points. How do you get over the hurdle of the Chiefs? Ah, uh, Kryptonite. Like, we just got to tighten up and play better. We just have a lot of belief in this team. We think that we can win no matter what the situation is. It's going to be an intense game, a fun game. I can't wait to get out there. Good day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into First Take. Thank you for being with us on this Friday Eve. What, Mr. Smith? Well, I want to say good morning to Dan Olofsky and stuff like that. And I just want to say for the record, before we get into the debate and everything like that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not laughing at people being injured. I really am not laughing at people being injured. All right. I wish the Marcus Lawrence the best. I want him to get yeah. back on that field, be healthy. I don't wish injury on anybody. But how many times do I have to tell Cowboy fans, just wait? You are unbelievable. Just, just wait, just be patient. Something will happen. You this are is so who they are. Wrong this for is this. Zach Martin was on, a, on, a on the COVID soul, list man. last week. Zach COVID, Zach Martin was on the COVID list last yeah. week. You got Demarcus Lawrence getting hurt. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Randy Gregory. Uh, Leo Collins suspended. You got the uh, I mean, Michael Ra Gallup Ra won't be available. Randy Gregory, he on the COVID list. And, uh, uh, did y'all hear Leon Lett, who's the coach? <laughs> He's coach. He had to get uh, carried off the field yesterday. Hold on. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. Hold what on, can't Stephen go A. Wrong. We'll go wrong when it comes to them damn Cowboys. That's all I wanted to say. That's all Stephen I wanted A. To say. Before we get going and me having to mop you up today, two oh, things. While you're nice. a man after my own heart, dogging the Cowboys right now, right. you called me Elvis. You're the last person at ESPN that should be talking about your hair versus mine. Excuse okay. me. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Let's make that clear. I mean, come on. Just With the five not, head. Just you got a five listen, head, listen. not a four I'm, head. I'm losing. Five Excuse head. me. Excuse me, youngster. Excuse me, youngster. I have age on my side. I look pretty damn good to be in my 50s. You the do. bottom line is all I – I wasn't dog in the head. I'm just saying, damn, I didn't know Elvis. I thought Elvis left the building. I didn't know he was still here. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying all right. to say. Don't well, get We're going to have some fun. You both look very handsome. I like the outfits. Dan, so happy you're here. The only other place I'd want to see you is coaching UConn football in stores, but I will take you here on Don't wish that on them. Don't wish that on them. Let's go. I know what I'll be doing. 8-20 on uh, Sunday. One player that, that, you're, you, know, that you haven't beat, beaten yet? No, nah, you know, um, it's not about, you know, man, Mahomes. Not to me, you know, probably to everyone else, but, you know, it's the Ravens versus Kansas City Chiefs. Lost it. Here you go. All right. Uh, dealing with some technical difficulties over here, but we will figure this out. Got it, we got Dan, it. I will start with you. Do, you. do you agree or disagree with Lamar that it's not about him versus Mahomes, but the Ravens versus the Chiefs? I completely agree with Lamar. I would actually argue that one of the main reasons why the Ravens lost to the Raiders on Monday Night Football was Lamar was trying to do so much. He was trying to be Superman in a situation where his team needed to be, him to be Superman. And I think one of the main mistakes or one of the biggest mistakes a quarterback can make going into any game is thinking I got to do everything myself, that I got to try and, and kind of put my imp through. One of the best tight ends in football, okay? Yes, he like is. He's one of the best tight ends in football. Three, three catches on Monday Night Football. You got to step up. I need you to step up in a big game. The last time the Ravens played the Chiefs, you had three catches. Mark Andrews, you're paid all that money to play your best and big-time game. So I agree. This has got to be a Ravens versus the Chiefs rather than Lamar versus Patrick. Well, you're wrong, and I'm going to tell you why you're wrong because that's not reality. You're breaking it down scientifically because being the astute football analyst you are, and I certainly am not challenging your football knowledge. You know me better than that. You're that dude. But here's the reality of the situation. I'm – a pundit, but I'm a fan as well. And I'm on the outside looking in. If you want to go into the specifics and the nuances of it, of course, in reality, that's what it comes down to. 
But that's not how it's going to be judged, Dan Olofsky, and you know better than that. The reality is that we look at Lamar Jackson and we see a stud, a superstar athlete, an electrifying box office caliber player who a lot of people would be looking at and they say, okay, A, your level of accuracy needs to increase the amount of wins and losses they had against one another. And yeah. so at the end of the day, Dan, that's what it's going to come down to. You're going to look at Lamar Jackson, credit to him because of his electrifying talent and his greatness. We're going to also look at what he's missing because we know what Patrick Mahomes got. You don't get to – you if you're Lamar Jackson, you don't get to ignore that. You can try, but it ain't going to work. All right, two things. This, and this is one of the reasons why I love Patrick Mahomes and I hate Patrick Mahomes because we compare okay. everybody to Patrick Mahomes. Lamar can still be great and play great and not be in the same stratosphere as Patrick because he isn't. As a quarterback, Patrick Mahomes has been already comped to some of the greatest ever. We've okay. talked about him being the most impressive or most talented guy we've ever seen come into the NFL. So for mm -hmm. Lamar to think, I got to go do that or I got to go be that, then you're automatically going to – kind of minimize your impact. I go back That's to That's not what Cleveland, I'm saying, though. No. But you're saying you're going to compare his performance to Patrick Mahomes's. But, 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 but here's what I mean by that. I'm not talking about Patrick Mahomes throws for 400 yards, so Lamar Jackson has to throw for 400 yards. Patrick Mahomes completes 70% of his passes, so Lamar Jackson has to complete at least 65% of his passes. That's not what I'm saying. Right. Be who you are. But from an impact perspective, that leads to a win. You're 0-3 against this, brother. You're going up against him. We're going to count the L's as they continue to accumulate. Whatever it is that you do that works for you, it needs to be good enough to beat that dude. And Otherwise, we're going to say, yo, you're not winning against this dude. Yeah, and I agree with that. My mind goes back to, you remember the Monday Night Football game against the Browns last year? Yeah. Do you remember anything Lamar did in the first or second quarter? Because I no. don't. But, but he I remember the fourth, fourth quarter. That's yeah, right. I remember those plays in the fourth exactly. quarter. Exactly. That's what and I'm that's, saying. But, but that's my thing is if you if Lamar is going to go and say, uh, I've got to go be so special and so great, he's going to play poorly. In the first and second quarter, he will play poorly because he's going to be trying to do so much. But if he just keeps his team in the game and doesn't try to be special until the moments where special is needed, then they got a shot. But it's going to take a little bit from Mark Come Andrews. On, and it's going to play a little bit listen, from their listen, defensive coordinator. Listen, Steve listen, Nate, that's the reality, listen, though. Listen, you got Sammy Watkins, you got Hollywood Brown, you got Mark Andrews. Those These brothers can play. Up. They're not scrubs. But let's call a spade a spade. Lamar Jackson needs to be special in order for Baltimore to win most weeks. Agree. So, uh, so, so Agree. if that's the reality, why shouldn't he have that mentality when you're going up against somebody as special as Patrick Mahomes, as Tyreek Hill, as Travis Kelsey? Now, he ain't the only one that needs to have to, to have a commitment to be a special. Mark Andrews needs to look at Travis Kelsey on the opposite side of the field and say, I need to be on that level. Sammy Watkins needs to look at his old, you know, his former teammates like a Tyreek Hill and be like, I need to be on that level. Certainly you need to be able to do other guys need to step up. But Lamar Jackson can't be like, well, you know what? I, I, I'm just going, I, I, you know what? I, it's not about me and Mahomes. People are going to look at it and it's going like this. We know Mahomes going to show up. Or are you going to show up? That's all we're saying. We ain't saying nothing more than that, Dan. I'm with that. I fit. That's right. fair. We'll leave it there. Chiefs favored by two and a half. See the wisdom? See how Dan embraced the wisdom? I mean, I got it. Dan loves <laughs> learning about quarterbacks <laughs> from you, Stephen oh, that's A. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's he what does. he told me he in does. private. He does. He does. He's he like, does. I need to come on first thing and get schooled about the quarterback position yeah. so I can well, help break things down. We all know I'm playing because that brother's got more football than I know. Or the starter, Daniel Jones. <laughs> It's, it, excuse me, of course it's the backup Taylor Heineken. I mean, what are y'all talking about? I mean, listen, y'all. I, mean, I mean, listen, come on, y'all. I need a can, can, can we, can this we stop? Can, 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 we stop can, can we stop it? Can we stop it, guys? I, I know y'all live it. Can first you of, stop it? I want to say this. First of all, Daniel Jones went to Duke. He didn't went to. He didn't go to UConn. Y'all don't need to be They're embracing both, them. So it's a secondary university. university. Hold up, hold up. Yeah. They're both basketball schools. I'm just saying, Carry I understand on. that. But pause. you don't need to be pause. embracing him like that. You don't need to be embracing him like that. He go to UConn. Con, that's number one. Number two, 40, 40 turnovers since 2019, 18 fumbles. The brother can't hold on to the ball. What are we talking about here? Game is clean. What are we that's talking about here? Okay, game. Taylor Heineke. Now, we haven't seen much of him, but he did quarterback in a playoff game. We saw how he played 
pretty damn good against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We saw him come in after Fitzpatrick got hurt on Sunday. He completed more than seven. Dan, you're the one, you're the one debating, but That's this one's true. a little personal yeah, for yeah, me. It is. You always get your personal about the Giants and you come, but we'll talk about that yeah. later, Molly. Yeah. 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 Dan, yeah. go ahead, yeah. but you have to say the play calling hasn't been exceptional by Jason Garrett. At least Molly didn't get up out of a chair the table this time, the Steelers. Dan. All right, so Daniel Jones is the better quarterback, but it's a lot closer than it should be. Okay. And everyone knows where I stand since the moment they took Daniel Jones in New York. I was like, you should not take this kid, number six. But, Molly, your point, love watching tape. It's painful. I, I look at it like this, Stephen A. If you flip the situation, mm -hmm. if I took Taylor Heineke and put him with the New York Giants, and mm -hmm. then I took Daniel Jones and put him with some of skill position in Washington, I truly believe that we see a different version of J Daniel Jones. I don't ever think Daniel Jones is going to be a great player. I don't think he has the physical ability to go be a great player in right. today's NFL at the quarterback spot. But mm -hmm. I think Tyler, Taylor Heineke, for the solid player that he is, is much more limited than a Daniel Jones is. Daniel well, Jones well, is just in the worst situation in the NFL when it comes to quarterback play. Let me say this to play. you. Here's the problem with you, and I'm not even addressing the Molly thing because Molly did everything but stand up out of a chick because she get emotional about her New York Giants, and I'm just not going to – I can't say anything to Molly because I, I say I say the Giants uniforms don't look that great. Molly's ready to, to be apoplectic. I mean, I'm not. I'm just not going to even go there. Here's the deal. Good. Here's you the reality are, of the you situation. You know better. You know this, you know this, Dan, and you know this too, Molly. What? I'm just looking at some of these cats on their roster, right? Sterling Shepard, can he play? He can play. Galladay, can he play? Solid player. Oh, uh, Kyle Rudolph's your backup tight end. Now you got him from Minnesota. We know he can play, he can right? Play. This kid, Kadarius Tony, out of Florida. I mean, this brother, listen, they're, they're talking about out. the potential, yeah. how electrifying he could potentially be as a playmaker, right? Yeah. Did it ever occur to y'all, because I want you to understand something. I'm not trying to act like Taylor Heineke is so special. Sure. I, it, it's, I'm denigrating Daniel Jones based on his, you know, his, you know, his pension for turnovers. What I'm saying to you, and it's a question more so than anything else, Dan, yeah. is it possible that the New York Giants are as, are as archaic as they are because they don't believe in their quarterback? Is that possible? I, I no. I think they are as are as archaic as they are because their offensive coordinator Jason Garrett doesn't know anything else. This is the same offense that he ran 15 years ago. It's mm. the same offense that he ran with Tony Romo. Stephen A. I'm with you. We see Daniel Jones relatively the same. Okay, gives the ball away way too much. Uh, I want him to play as smart as he is, but. It's really difficult to sit here and crush him as a player. When I watch that offense, and I'm literally being honest here, it's the worst offense in the NFL scheme-wise. There's not a single moment where the players are put at an advantage because of the scheme. They're often put as a disadvantage. I think if I'm taking the, the players and just removing them from situations, I still believe Daniel Jones is better. But to your point, it should not be this close. He was the sixth pick of the draft. Taylor Heineke's a journeyman that's been on four different teams. But Daniel Jones, I still think, is a better player. Dan, we got to go to break quick. But real quick, I just want to know this for the Giants because something has to happen. If, if somebody had to be cut, who is it at this point for you? Who are you pointing the Jason finger at? Garrett. Is it Gettleman for, for drafting him? Is it Jason Garrett? Like, first, what are you Garrett doing first. if you are the G – so Stephen A. is saying it's Garrett right now. First. Like, what are you doing if they get beat down tonight? I agree with Stephen A. I'm moving on from Jason Garrett. Now, maybe Freddie Kitchens is the answer, who had some moments when he came in with Baker Mayfield, but then he was the head coach. He was terrible. There's a difference between being a good head coach and a good play caller and a good offensive line. I think it's Jason Garrett. Gettleman is gone at the end of the season if the if Giants yep. don't do something this year. Oh. He's on his way out. John Mara, you listen to him coming into the season. It's clear they're going to make change. They ain't tolerating this much, so much longer. Okay, we understand that. I think their record like now under Gettleman is like 15 and 34, Dan, if I remember correctly. It's like 15 and it's 34. Bad. John Mara's not tolerating that any longer. But based off of what Dan is saying, Jason Garrett has to go if this offense remains Agreed. as predictable. And there's nothing about Joe Judge that says he's averse to change. Which is no. why what you're saying kind of surprises me because I'm thinking it's the limitations of Daniel Jones that has them this way because they didn't acquire all of this talent to be as predictable as you say they are. And I know we got to go, Molly. I sure. think it should be the flip in New York okay. I, because I, I don't think that they should try to put limitations on Daniel Jones. I really think because of his athleticism, they should unleash him a little bit, but they try to box him. Molly, Giants fans can sit at home tonight 
and know exactly where Daniel Jones is going to be in the pocket every single snap. That's they don't problem. move him at all for a guy who's a good athlete. I agree, okay. Stephen A. If they don't play well tonight, they have to look at it because they got to win, to Stephen A's point. They have to look at the offensive coordinator spot. The three of us can put together a better offense by next week easily. Yeah, that's mm. scary. I mean, except for yeah. you. You know, Stephen A., I think 2022 is my year as a sports fan. Yeah, yeah. it ain't 2021. No, it, ain't 2021. it is not, it ain't especially after that Purdue game yeah. Saturday. That's right. All right, next on You Thursday, actually went. It's the quarterback the situation. Game, I sure right, did. Yes. That everybody has an opinion on. Do the Bears continue to roll out Andy Dalton as a QB1, or does Dan think now is the best time to inject Justin Fields? Plus, speaking of Mr. Olavsky, he comes bearing gifts today, Stephen A. Oh, a no. stunning surprise. I don't even know about it. I'm told it's going to leave you shook. I actually don't really <laughs> like surprises, so I'm a little bit nervous. I love Dan. Oh, it's all right. It's okay. Dan Orlovsky, I understand you really came to face Smith or Smith today, and I'm hearing that you have prepared a little something for Stephen A. Okay, let's roll that tape. Oh, boy. All right, Stephen A., so I'm always coming on your show, and you're always saying, like, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. You're paying attention to everything I say because you want to try and jump on me and my take. So I wanted to let you know that I'm also watching you, and there's some things that I want to share with you when it comes to the way you go about your business. First of all, as we watch this tape, Watch your feet and all the movement that it has. Stephen A, put your feet in the ground and be where you are. This is not dance class lessons with Stephen A. Smith and Michael Irvin. Keep your feet where you are. Number one, I'm going to talk about that left hand in the pocket. There's a theme here. That's step number one with you. Number two is this. Here we go. Watch. We're going to get this. with deep. Look at my guy, Big Wood. Big Wood has got vision on the people at home. The people at home are tuning in to, to listen to the things that you have to say. What are you looking at over here? You should be paying attention to the people in the camera. They're tuned in to watch you. But we're going to watch another thing here. Number two, Stephen A. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Also, can I get a bone-in fillet? What is this outfit? Get some better color coordination. Get your hands out of your pockets, Stephen A. This is television. And then the third, look at this. Are you brokering a deal or something with Marcus Spears? Are you guys talking real estate or something? Are you trying to sell him a product? Get your left hand out of your pocket. Stop leaning up against something because you work so many hours that you're so tired. Address the man. He's trying to teach you something about football. And then what? is this with your hands keep them stationary keep your feet still Stephen A you're always saying I'm watching you I just want to let you know share those things with you that maybe you can get a little bit better better reach the goals that you want when it comes to this industry and I'll see you soon that's right I'm gonna get you that's I'm, right. Oh, oh I'm just gonna get you. You, just a couple you don't nuggets. know what you done started. You don't know. I mean, you see that? <laughs> that was first, so first, good, first, Dan. First, first of all, first of all, I'm getting all. The, I, I, listen, I'm getting Lee Fitting. I'm getting you. I'm getting Swag Goo. So I'm good. getting Mina. I'm getting. I'm getting all. The, everybody was in on it. Just see everything. Oh, all of y'all. I'm coming for all. You done started something now. Oh, now, now you, I know he, your security he, blanket. He used left the big board the on me and talked about left hand in the pocket. Left hand in the pocket. All the way. I thought oh this man God. was trying. Your stance. I, I thought I mean, he was trying to broker some kind of deal with Marcus Spears. Man, I got three and a half on the rate. Maybe I could get it down to three, four or oh something like that. Damn. Yeah, you know. We saw a white coat. I just wanted to know. Can I get what a bone and fillet and mac and cheese? How about when he clowned the outfit? He did. That, 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 that was low. I can't believe him of all people. <laughs> Looking with, like him, a him, some, him with some of them damn suit TV when he talk about my outfit. Just a I couple was a pretty fly outfit you know, I had on that day, better. too. But it's all right. NFL Live. Oh, see, you see, I needed see, that see, last see, hand. See, see, see like NFL Live. Surprise. Come on in the afternoon. Must see television. Everybody yeah. watching. Four o'clock. And he didn't come on first take and do this. Oh, no. He used the big board in the studio and just, oh, Oh, y'all done started something. That's all I'm going to say. Y'all oh, done started you. something. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm here. Okay. I'm all right. Here. Okay. All, all right. Time. Stephen right. A, okay. he right. is watching you. All right, it's all right. He is watching they done started you. Started oh now. now I watch NFL Live anyway. Right. But now, Guys, oh, y'all in trouble. We're also y'all watching trouble. quarterbacks, especially in Chicago. Let's do for 10 yards and a rushing TD off the bench in his NFL debut. Dan, you are up first. Who should the Bears start week two? Justin Fields, because it gives them their best chance to win the football game. 
You know, three things that stand out to me from Molly. I watched the Patriots play this past weekend with Mac mm -hmm. Jones. And the number one thing that stood out in my mind was, man, they really built this offense around the things that Mac Jones does well. And they never asked him to do things he can't do. That's good coaching. And I sit here constantly and ask myself, why can't the Bears do that with Justin Fields? I understand that the Bears have a playbook that is four inches thick. And that's a lot of information for a young player to take in. So minimize it a little bit. Build the offense around the things that Justin Fields can do. Because the reality is, and I watched that offensive line play the other night, they weren't atrocious, they weren't by any means great, but everyone was talking about, wow, if you play Justin Fields, there's no doubt that you're going to get him killed. I, I watched him play. I watched Zach Wilson for the Jets. Everyone remembers the big hit that Justin Fields took in the preseason against the Buffalo Bills. Zach Wilson took the same hit, but his coaches are playing him. Cause that's the best way that he can learn. And I'm sitting here going, if the Bears truly want to win football games, because it's not necessarily the question of who's the better quarterback right now. If you want to have the conversation that Andy Dalton might be a better NFL quarterback right now, I could sit here and have that vibe. But it should be this. Who's the better quarterback for the offense? Or what offense is better given the quarterback that is playing? And that's Justin Fields. Marcus Spears said it this week. I watched the Atlanta Falcons get absolutely run through about the Philadelphia Eagles, and they took an athletic quarterback in Jalen Hurts and built an offense around him with some of the RPOs and the quarterback run game, and Marcus said it. You have an advanced version of Jalen Hurts in Chicago. You have a significantly yeah. more talented version. If you just build an offense around him, the Bears have a legit chance to win football games because I go into every week, and I'll go into week two when they play the Bengals, and I go, I expect the Bengals to win this football game, mainly because I have no faith in their offense. Well, see, here's the deal. We disagree, but I don't disagree with the points that you're making about what the Bears need to do. Where we disagree is with the timing. The offensive line was much maligned last year. Supposedly it showed modicum incremental improvement last year, and then they're coming back this year. But it's all throughout the offseason, in the preseason, in the training camp, obviously training camp and preseason, people were still talking about the offensive line. We all know, and this is what I'm shocked that you didn't bring up, you know good and damn well. The only reason that you would sit up there and throw Justin Fields in there at this particular moment in time is if you're Nagy or Ryan Pace and you're thinking about your job, not about what's in the best interest of the team moving forward. Again, we know that Justin Fields is going to be the starter. By week four, I predict he'll probably be the starter. But my point is, right now, Andy Dalton going up against his former team, the Cincinnati Bengals. Ali just completed 71% of his passes last week. He wasn't god-awful. They seem like they're trying to get it together. So it's almost by default that I'm saying this, Dan Olofsky. I, 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 listen, they've been to the playoffs, but we haven't been overly impressed with Matt Nagy. Right. We know him and Ryan Pace are under immense pressure because you moved up in the draft to get Mitchell Trubisky years ago. You passed up on Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. You've been struggling. You haven't been able to live it down. You brought Nick Foles up in there. That didn't work out. Mitchell Trubisky ain't even there no longer. He's a backup in Buffalo to a $258 million man that ain't going to be sitting down, okay? Which means he's just going to be holding the clipboard and practicing. He ain't going to be playing come Sunday. The bottom line is when you look at the Chicago Bears, if you put Justin Fields in before all your ducks are in a row, you might be jeopardizing him. That's my issue. Again, he's going to be the quarterback. I'm just saying, wait a couple of weeks. Now, you should be able to hold your own against Cincinnati, yeah. even though they want to come up. That's my only issue, Dan Olavsky. That's where I'm coming from. My pushback would be this. You're only going to ruin a player, because that, that happens a lot at the quarterback spot, if they can't do it here. And that's why you got to know Justin Fields. This isn't a man, Justin Fields. Justin Fields is a big, thick guy. Like, he is going to be able to absorb some of the hits that he might take with some of the protections. Can he deal with some of the struggle? And if you believe that he can, there's no question about it, Stephen A., that you put him on the field. And this is the point that I think is the most important in the whole situation and the Bears fans should be paying attention to. Again, it's not necessarily who we think is the best quarterback. When each of them plays, which one makes the best offense? Because I know exactly what this offense is with Andy Dalton. It is a bottom 10 offense at best, given the, minute, the, the limitations up front, somewhat of the limitations at the skill position and, and the scheme. Justin Fields makes this offense in totality better. And if you're going to sit here as a coach and say, you know what, he's not ready to play, that's on you. Because I just pointed out Mac Jones. And but the we Patriots, know it's on now. But, but we know but, it's on now. Matt Nagy is not Bill Belichick. 
Right. That's we know it's not them. We so know why? It's, it's, so what the changes in three weeks then? Are they so going to be better? What changes in tour? Are they going to be better coaches in three weeks? Well, no, no. But I do think that an additional time would hurt Justin Field because remember, I don't, I, I don't think that Justin Field should be thrown into the Lions then against the Cleveland Browns a week from now, a week after Cincinnati. So my point is this: you go week four and on, you give him that first quarter of the season, pretty much that. And then after that, you give it to him. Until, until then, you got Andy Dalton in there. You're bringing Justin Fields in there to do some plays for you. You've got duality at the quarterback position in terms of the weapon that he can present to you. I'm not saying bench the dude and don't play him. But when you hand the reins to him as the starting quarterback, you can't go back. Go back. Yeah. So why do that in week two? Is injury you're worried about? Or is, it his, is injury what you're worried about so being mental. behind that offensive line? Or is it more so his confidence? It's the con- Well, I'm not worried about his confidence. I am worried about his protection. Yeah. I am yes. worried about how ready Matt Nagy has everybody around him by week two. I think the additional time is beneficial before Justin Fields is handed the reins. Because once you give it to him, you can't take it back. Yeah, it's uh, his. Uh, and Stephen, yeah, yeah. I agree with the protection, but here's the point. Because I, I do college football every weekend, and you talk to some of these coaches, and when you hear college football coaches talk about sometimes we got to play re- freshman quarterbacks, and we can't give them the whole playbook. We just got to give them mm-hmm. little bits and pieces to make sure we ease them in. Okay. My question from the jump is why won't the Bears do that? It's not – we don't have to run all of our protections. But a really good coaching staff could go, you know what, maybe we're not going to do in, in things that are going to expose him, so to speak. But we can ease him because the reality is this. His physical talent will mask so many of the things that they are incapable of doing mm. or won't do. Yeah, That's but, the whoa, biggest whoa, whoa, issue. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dan Olofsky, you were on here a couple of years ago. We were talking about Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah. And you were lamenting. How athletic he was, right? And how little use was, we, 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 how 100%. little he was being utilized in that regard. Same coach, agree. Same system, same dudes. So now it's Justin Fields instead of Mitchell Trubisky. Now I think that Justin Fields is an upgrade from Trubisky, yeah. but nevertheless, the coaching is the same. The apprehension is the same, and because of that, I'm saying you just go drill Justin Fields up in there. I don't know about that in week two. I feel much more comfortable if they did a week four after they play Cleveland in week three. Utilize Justin Fields coming into the game, throwing a ring, you know, just throwing something into the mix to sort of discombobulate and confuse opposing defenses. Go there in Cincinnati and Cleveland respectively over the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. See how that works for you. Get his legs out from under you. Get him started. Get him geared up. Hand him the reins in week four and go from there. That's what I would do. I would say the Chicago Bears should sit down and watch the the Philadelphia Eagles film from this past week. Mm. Watch what the Baltimore Ravens do with Lamar Jackson. Watch what the Buffalo Bills do with Josh Allen. And then watch what the Rams do with Matthew Stafford. Figure out, like, build an offense around that stuff and play Justin Fields as soon as possible. Well, listen to what you're saying, man. For them, it's also what saves their job, Dan. You know, I wonder if they feel like they're better off playing Dalton for some reason. Well, I think, Molly, this is a guess. This is an assumption right. that I think ownership has given them assurance that they'll be there next year, both head coach and general manager. And well, that's okay. why they're being so peaceful and patient with this decision. I will say this. Interesting. It, hold on, hold on. The reports, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, the reports were saying Dalton started because when he was signed, remember, yeah. they wanted to trade for Deshaun Watson yeah. in the offseason. That did, I'm sorry, not, not Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson. I apologize. Right. Yep. That did not happen. Yeah. So once that did not happen and they acquired Andy Dalton, they made promises <laughs> to him that he would be the week one starter. You yeah. see what I'm saying? That's Absolutely. why he started well, week one. Well, why are you making said. promises to Andy but, Dalton? But that, because because they didn't have anybody. Once they had moved Drabitsky, they no, wanted I to make it, sure they like, got Is that who you should be making promises right? to? I'm just saying no. to start week one. But the child, now the, the, we're talking into the season. I say wait. You know, use just the field. It feels like their loyalties are a little bit And they the reins week four. Dan, last word here. The challenge for the Bears right now is their defensive football team goes into every game thinking they're not going to win until they put Justin Fields on the field. Okay. Yeah. They, well, well, they're kind of used to that, and Dan. They felt that the way all last room. year. Chicago deserves better. What's, 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 two, what's two more weeks? They felt that way the whole last season. Okay. What's two more weeks? That's nice. Two more weeks. Stephen A., just trust the process. I'm just saying. The NFL equivalent no, no, no. of the Warriors. No, no you're going to like this. The Warriors blew a 3-1 lead. It's telling a Falcons fan 28-3. Fair or foul? Uh, will this always follow Matt Ryan? Dan says, you have to wait for that. Damian Woody says it's his turn to get at Stephen A. That bad man looked flat out bad against the Saints. Damian.
to Jalen Hurts and Philly have to travel to Tampa to face Tom Brady and the defending champs. You know, whenever Brady is brought up around Matt Ryan, everyone's mind goes to that Super Bowl collapse in 2017. Here's Matty Ice. A lot of it may because you played Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, 328 jokes. I know you hear about all the time. I know. Um, I never heard of it. <laughs> Listen, I, of course we want to win this week, but it's not going to make up for that. Like, you know, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's it's a part of your past. It's part of what happened. Um, you know, but it's got no bearing on this week. Dan, let me ask you this. Do you think it's fair or unfair that that constantly follows Matt Ryan and is always brought up, that Super Bowl collapse? You're all a piece of work. Y'all, you guys are a piece of work because you guys wanted to bring me on on the first day that I come on first take and ask me if I think it's fair that a single moment or a single play of Matt Ryan's past if it's fair that it's still brought up about, like, the, I might be a person that has a single moment or a single play from their past that constantly what are you I to? have to I get don't know. I, I have no yeah. idea what you're talking about. Yeah, that so I what constantly. Are, what, are, what are you referring to? Yeah, I mean, I have to get reminded, oh, look at Dan. He ran. Why would you listen to Dan? He ran out of the end zone in 2008, 14 years ago. So now we're, let's bring Dan on and ask him if it's fair that Matt Ryan has to constantly get asked about the comeback in Super Bowl 46 or whatever it was. No, it's not fair. And no, Matt Ryan doesn't care about it. Sure, he would have loved to have win the, won the game, but he also threw for 270 yards against the number one ranked defensive football last year in that Super Bowl. He also threw for two touchdowns. And so while he played incredibly well, he played good. Devontae Freeman's the guy who missed the block. You know, Matt Ryan's not thinking, hey, my tailback is going to miss that block. Edelman has that ridiculous catch. So no, it's not fair. And Matt Ryan doesn't care. He wanted to win the game, but I promise you, he's got two commas in his bank account. He's got a lot of numbers, comma, a lot of numbers, comma, a lot of numbers, period. He's made a lot of money playing football. He's had an incredible career, maybe a Hall of Fame career. And no, it's not fair that people will constantly remind him that they made that comeback, the New England Patriots, and he was a part of it. Oh, would you stop? Just stop it. Come Disappointing, y'all. Wasn't nobody thinking at all about you running out of the end zone 14 years ago. You just told on yourself. I totally forgot about that. I wouldn't have brought it up anyway. It don't matter. The fact of the matter is that ain't what this is about. This is about Matt Ryan. And if somebody was saying he was a scrub or somebody was saying he can't play, that would be unfair. If we sat up there and put blinders on as to how skilled this man has been as a quarterback throughout his career, that would be unfair. But it is totally, totally fair to recall the Super Bowl the collapse because of the residue it has left behind. Now, let's take this into consideration. Since that Super Bowl, right, you've had a 10-6 and six season because you were 11-5 and five the year you went to the Super Bowl. 10-6, and 7-9, 7-8, 4-12 last year, 0-1 oh now. That is a record of 28 and 35, 36 rather, since you have lost the Super Bowl. That's number one. Very few pair of appearances, like once, one or two, all right? You've been missing the playoffs. Number two, Matt Ryan, and nobody brings this up, but I'm going to get on you, Dan, for not bringing this up. Because as knowledgeable as you are about the game, you should be ashamed of yourself for omitting this. That man was 31 years of age. While I do understand that Kyle Shanahan was his offensive coordinator, that man was in his ninth year in the league at the time that he was in that Super Bowl. We all know if they had ran the football and they had milked the clock, New England would have ran out of time to, to come back from a 25-point damn deficit the way that they do. They kept throwing the football, and that's what cost them. Number three, the point is this. You have have the cachet. It's not just that you're the starting quarterback, not just that you were a veteran. You had built enough cachet where you could have made those decisions. That didn't happen. Also, since that time, everything has fallen apart. The franchise hasn't seemed to recover. So many changes have taken place. You got a new head coach, new coordinators. Kyle Shanahan, obviously, when it took the head coaching job in San Francisco. I'm looking at you, Matt Ryan, and this team has been nosed diving they have been a shell of what they used to be 
Why can't we look at Matt Ryan and go like this? Yo, my brother, you getting over 30 million a year. You're an all pro quarterback. Dan Olaski just brought up how you warrant Hall of Fame consideration. All of this stuff, this residue has been happening around you. And what have you done about it? Little to nothing. That is the reality. The defense was bad. A lot of injuries. I get over that. But still, figure out a way to win some games. Win some games. Okay, Stephen A., whether he had won that Super Bowl or not, would not have impacted the future. Kyle but still we would have called left. you a champion. But, but we would call you a champion. But And you pointed out he's not a champion because of his play. You pointed out he's not a champion because you thought Kyle Shanahan still should have run the football. I remained adamant, and I said this when it happened. I didn't mind the play call by Kyle on that second and seven because they were going to be aggressive, and that's how they got there. But you can't point out, well, they should have run the football, but then pin it upon Matt Ryan and sit there, that he's gonna, and, and sit there and say he's going to regret it was out of his – Devontae Freeman's the guy who doesn't block that person. I'm going to give you this. Yes, in that moment, you would sit there and go, man, you were that close. And surely there's going to be a moment of regret. But it is not something that on a daily basis is going to haunt Matt Ryan. Again, this man has played a ton of really good football. He's made a ton of money. When he hops on to PJ Let's, and goes to play golf at some really nice golf courses, he ain't sitting there going, man, see, I see, can't see, believe see, they, you don't realize this. You open in your mouth, Dan, and you're creating more enemies for Dan, uh, for, for, for Matt Ryan. I'm going to tell you why. We might not be that way nationwide because we don't give a damn about the Falcons. Down in the ATL. I mean, we've had T.I. on this show. We've had Ludacris on this show. I've had various people from the ATL on this show. None of them can stand Matt Ryan. Oh, they hold that against them. So trust me, it's about your locale. Let's pay attention to that. Let's also pay attention to this reality. You could talk about, oh, you got there because you were being aggressive or whatever. I see Dan Olowski come on TV all the time. He on get up, he on first take, yeah. he on NFL Live. Doing he's a, a he, I, he's omnipotent. He's every damn way, okay? This is what Dan Olowski yeah. says. Dan Olowski says, where's your eyes? What about your fear, the vibe? The man, sense what's going on. Make changes. Make adjustments. What's wrong with these people? What's wrong with you being in the Super Bowl and going like this? Well, damn, we had a 28-3 lead. It's 28-10, to 10, and then it's 28-17, and that damn Tom Brady is over on the other sideline. We might want to do things just a touch differently here because the moment is ours. Let's not give this away. But they didn't do that, and they had a veteran quarterback who had the power to tell somebody as significant as Kyle Shanahan, yo, we don't need to do that. I think we need to do this. Matt Ryan didn't do that. He didn't do that. And you got to hold him accountable for that, Dan. As somebody that has stuff from their past, it's time to move on. It's unfair that we constantly follow Matt Ryan with, you didn't get it done. It's okay to move on. It's okay and to move on. Let me tell you this. this but is a, but they're I, not this, getting it hold done. Hold on, hold on. This is a principle I live by. Stinks. I do not judge people by their worst moment. And I Thank will leave Molly. everyone with that. I want everyone to marinate on that. because none of She's Molly. lying. Be judged by the You're worst lying. Moment. No, I'm not. Molly I'm really, judges people no, by their worst no, moments every no, day. No. When, That's I, a no, lie. when I go to bed at night, I say, where can I be better? And I try wow. not to judge people. Oh, my God. Wow. I do. Oh, I do. My God. Every day I, I do that. Every Both day I do that. Both of y'all. I say, you know, how could I have been better to Stephen A? Look at oh, Stephen A. Look how much better you're getting today because of Molly and I. Lift Stephen A. more so I he watch, can fulfill his dreams. How I work I beside Molly. Teammate? Hold on, Molly. I work beside Molly every day. I see you all the time. I'm watching you. You two pick people apart with your critique every day. And she would sit up there on national television with a straight face and say, I don't judge people by their worst moments. <laughs> when you, and she how has the game do conversations every day. How does he go with, you could have... I don't judge people by their worst. How does he change his voice like that so quickly? That's, I don't know. I, I got to learn that. I need a telestration on that. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's oh. go to break. All right, guys. Uh, based on body language alone, Urban Meyer not exactly looking thrilled so far in Jacksonville. Can't blame him. How enticing does that SC opening look to him? That debate in a bit. Plus, everyone knows how terrible A-Rod looked week one, but are we overlooking how elite the Saints defense might be this season? Damian Woody with a compelling case.
stick around as Stephen A. and Dan Orlovsky debate that later the show. Uh, but first, Stephen A., you have something to say how people can get at you. Well, I just want to remind everybody that, um, you know, we, there's a new day here. First take, you and I are still here. Max is doing morning with Keyshawn and Jay Williams. We wish him nothing but the best. Plus, he started his new show, his new television this show. This just in. This, this just in that started debut Tuesday. So we wish him nothing but the best. You got a potpourri analyst that's going to be here. Dan Olofsky's here this morning. My man Damian Woody's coming up. Ryan Clark's going to be on. Dominique Foxworth. Monday's Michael Irvin. Tuesday's Keyshawn Johnson. Wednesday's Marcus Spears. Friday's Tim Tebow's. Plus, in the world of sports and entertainment, I'm leaving the seat open for anybody that wanted to get at me because there's a lot of people that have been chirping about wanting to get at me for quite some time. Well, the chair's open. Feel free to bring it. That's why I'm here. On that note, that's right, Stephen A., and it's a new day, and we've got a long list of yeah. people coming after you, including yeah. our very own Damian Woody. Oh, He's got please. something to say. Oh, well, what is he it. doing here? What is he doing here? Two-time Super Bowl champion, Damian Woody. I was getting tired of seeing that damn piano behind him, like he's Mozart or somebody. <laughs> I want to be sensitive to Mr. Mozart with the piano. I might import the piano right here in first take and just start playing. I'm a champion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to forget that, Stephen A. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As you can see, I got the suit, I got the tie looking crispy because I've been waiting on this day to stand right here with Stephen A. Where you at, Stephen A? Where you at? Don't hide in the studio. Don't hide in the studio from this butt whipping because you've been talking about this man, this bad man right here. Come on in. Come, come on. Come on. Stand right here. Come on right here. Stand right here. Stand right here. Because you've been talking so much smack. All I hear is he's a bad, bad man. Bad man who couldn't even complete 50% of his passes. Threw 433 yards and two picks against the Saints. That boy, that boy Jameis Winston, ooh, that boy made him look silly. That boy made him look silly in the same game, throwing five touchdown passes. All I want to know is, what do you have to say right here in this moment about your bad man, Aaron Rodgers? I need to know. Give me a bag of shells. Just one week. It's no big deal. It's just one game. It's just one game. It's going to be all right. You understand what I'm saying? This is, this is Aaron Rodgers, my man. He's still a bad man. Now, I was very upset at his performance. It was the most atrocious performance I've ever seen Aaron Rodgers put forth. I'll admit that. But if you think for one second that I'm going to sit here and be phased by you coming at me, acting like oh, you, what you saw Sunday oh, oh, you is, uh, is, a, is, oh, a, is, is, is something that's going to happen oh, you continuously. Fade. It won't happen again. Oh, you ever. Oh. It will never happen again. I, I it will you, never happen I, again. I will tell you this. Don't let him have a similar type performance this Monday night. Because yeah, because ESPN had Monday night football against the Detroit Lions. I'm if not I worried. see if I see any semblance of what I saw against the New Orleans Saints, man, I might even not wait until Thursday. Who? I might come up in here on Tuesday morning mm -hmm. to see you about Aaron Rodgers. Damian Woody. Yes. Who is the reigning league MVP? <sighs> Who's that dude? Who's that? That would have to be Aaron Rodgers. That would have to be okay, Aaron Rodgers. Okay. That would be 48 touchdowns, just five interceptions. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers, a Super Bowl champion. I'm talking okay. about Aaron Rodgers outside of Patrick Mahomes, considered the greatest talent the quarterback position has ever seen. He's not the GOAT resume-wise. We know that's Tom Brady. But this is Aaron freaking Rodgers. He's a bad man still. Now, I'm very upset. And what I saw, it took me aback. I had to sit up there and I had to lick my wounds. I had to say, what the hell happened? I can't believe this happened. But in the end, mm -hmm. it's one game. As Ralph Cramden said on the honeymoon, it's a mere bag of shells. It's no big deal. It's no big no, deal. No, but you know what? No, big deal. no, but you know what? But see, you know what? It is a big deal. Big deal. Because all offseason, we talked about this bad man every single day. Every single show I've been on. This well, whole offseason, we talking about, we're talking about Aaron Rodgers. Well, why were we the whole, about him? the whole conflict with the organization. That's right. He was in Hawaii. That's he right. was, he, you know, That's he right. was in LA. He That's was right. all over the with map. The fiance, yeah, with yeah, the fiance. With the fiance. Let's make sure. Yeah, 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 well, he wasn't just. He wasn't no, just not with pouting. He wasn't just with pouting. He was living a life. Well, listen, I would never bash a fiance. That's not. I wouldn't do that. I'm talking about strictly from a football, you know, football perspective. This man was all over the place, and then here it is, week one, and this man out here. 
throwing lame ducks to the New Orleans Saints? Yes. Can't he Jumping complete fifty percent of his passes? Jumping in the air, throwing two interceptions. But you know why you so shook? You know why you came on the air? Why, 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 you know why, 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 why you why, on the air right now? Why? Because you know. Why? We don't see that from Aaron Rodgers. That's not what we get normally. What's wrong with him? We wonder what I, I, I ain't going to lie to you. I looked in the tabloids, Molly. I was wondering whether they, whether him and his fiance broke up or something. I said, what's going on? There's nothing Aaron Rodgers. I know. Look, what the hell? is crispy. Don't even, the suit, don't even the suit, front. The suit is crispy. Yeah, don't even. Suit, don't I, even I, I give it to him. Two questions I have. Two questions. Yes. Uh, so the first thing is, why do you think he should have saw this coming? Well, listen, we all know. First of all, you can't sleep on the New Orleans Saints defense. Okay, talk That's about true. the Saints then. Tell me yeah, why. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, as much as as much I as I land, in Hawaii, listen, but no one thought Aaron well, Rodgers was going to well, play listen, like that. Well, listen, as much as I lambasted Aaron Rodgers, let's give props to the New Orleans Saints here. The yeah. New Orleans Saints. I think a lot of people forget. Everybody thought when Drew Brees moved on to the broadcasting booth that the Saints were just going to fall off. Yeah. And to me, that's a slap in the face of Sean Payton in that organization. Sean Payton is one of the best head coaches in the National Football League. This man is a quarterback. We'll see South this year. I, just, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that because their defense was real last year. Let's give props where it's due. They should lack Tampa Bay not once but twice. Let's remember what they're capable of doing. We understand that the question mark was Jameis Winston and whether or not he was going to be able to protect the ball as opposed to turning it over. But to get back to Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. let me be very, very clear. You can come up in here huffing and puffing like swag who yeah, all I, you want to. Uh, Y'all could do all of that. Well, I'm, a, yeah, I'm, the, I'm my you, own man. I'm right. my own man. I understand that. Okay, I'm my own man. You're a champion. But go ahead. You're a champion. Go ahead. But here's the reality of the situation. Because you're a champion, you know you just blowing smoke. You know what this brother's gonna do. You know what it is because you've seen him do it. And that's why you hold jumped on, hold on, hold on. That's why you jumped in here this morning. Hold you know why you jumped in here this morning? Ahead, because you know you ain't gonna be able to do this again. Wait, you know you ain't gonna be able to do this again. Wait, not for him. Wait, not what about him? Wait a minute, hold on. You talking about the same guy that the last time we saw him in a Super Bowl was in what 2011? Oh, so that's what we that, that, so that, 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 You know, that's you know, since she wanted to hop and pop, I mean, since she wanted to hop and pop, I'm just being real. I feel I feel you on that. Okay. He needs to get another Super Bowl. But what I'm saying to you is this. You ain't never seen him play that bad, and you'll never see it again. That's why you in here today, because you know this brother going to play like an MVP the rest of the way, because he's one of the greatest ever. He's going to show up. He's going to make amends for that atrocious performance this past Sunday, and you're going to come up here in every week. Uh, all right, he, he was all right. You're going to try to hate him, but it don't matter. It don't matter. Marla, let me yeah. tell you something right now. Yeah. I promise you on everything, uh -huh. if we see anything remotely, like we saw week sure. one, yeah. sure. I promise you, come Tuesday morning, uh -huh. next week, yeah. I don't care if y'all got me in the script or not. I am <laughs> walking in okay. here with all the smoke. You're invited. Tuesday morning. I'm I promise to, you. Stephen, promise a, you Stephen that. A, do you need security right now getting <laughs> no, back to your no, desk? No, no. Or he are you can okay? do that. You know why? Because you look very yeah. small. No, no, no. You look well, very who the hell petite. doesn't look small next look to this guy? That, that okay. is true. The point is, is true. here's the reality. I ain't worried about it. It's the Detroit Lions. I ain't worried about no damn Detroit Lions. Oh, when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, you know I'm not worried about it at all. Detroit on this show. You know he had a few years in Detroit. I don't know. We never even talk about that. That's right. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Hey, hey, hey. Did you catch? the checks? Yes. Oh, the, the, okay. The, the checks so, clear. So we can There's talk no about, about, listen, about that. We listen, can talk listen, about it. In the end, Aaron Rodgers is so special. It's just oh an aberration. Oh, my goodness. Let's it's go to break. To think about. I probably want to. You might. We might. You, I'm why, getting, just, it's why don't you now. say goodbye to him? Because okay. you might not see him again because he ain't going to be able to say nothing about Aaron Rodgers after this. That's all I got to say. Ain't nobody scared of you. Amen. Ain't nobody scared of you. Yeah. Well, watch Aaron Rodgers. Uh, that's why you walk backwards. He's a bad man. That's why you walk backwards. That's why I'm walking backwards. Right backwards. Yeah, that's why I'm walking backwards. backwards. Yeah, that's that's what what don't worry. I'm saying hi to you, not okay. bye to you. I know. Because I, I know you'll we, be back. We like that. Yeah. All right. Please. When we come back here on First Take, Urban Meyer has worn a lot of hats. Ohio State, Florida, now Jacksonville. But does he have an SC cap on his mind or will he stay put? in Jacksonville. We'll answer that. Damian will be back with us a little later. Two former number one overall picks. Two of them have the best arm talents in the NFL. Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence. But who's going to have the better career? What a debate that will be in just a bit. former coach. Okay. Here's a quick look at Urban Meyer's journey to the NFL. So after going 22-2 and with the Utah Utes, Meyer was brought on as the head coach for the Florida Gators. Meyer won five bowl games in six seasons with the Gators, including two national championships with Tim Tebow. After a short retirement, Meyer went on to coach the Ohio State Buckeyes. Listen to this, Stephen A. 83-9 and record in seven seasons in Columbus, including winning a national title in 2014. He again retired from coaching in 2019 after the Rose Bowl. Meyer again came out of retirement, but this time made the jump to the NFL 
to a Jags team coming off their worst season in franchise history and earning them the right to draft Trevor Lawrence number one overall. No chance that uh, I'm, I'm here and committed to try to build an organization. Okay. So what he was teed up about is that SC job. If Irvin Meyer would jump ship on Jacksonville, doesn't appear to be the best situation and would want to coach SC. Dan, if you're Irvin, would you go back to college football and do that? I would because then I could play to my strength. The thing that separated Urban Meyer from everybody else or mostly everybody else in, the last, in his 13 years between Florida and Ohio State was recruiting. And those 12 recruiting, recruiting classes, Molly, he had nine top three classes. You're going to win a lot of football games when you got that much talent. And that's what really Urban's strength was. You're not going to be able to do that in the NFL. In the NFL, it's about, well, you get given the players that you get. And you got to develop those players to become pros. And the losing is going to be a significantly at a significantly higher rate than it is going to be at the college level. There's a reason why Urban won all those games. The biggest difference between the NFL and college football, and I'm around both of them working for ESPN, is college football is about recruiting. It is about mm-hmm. getting as much talent as you can because you only got it for three or four years. How much young talent can you get as quickly as possible? The NFL is about having three or four players that are very good and then having a bunch of really good players that you scheme up to be elevated talent-wise. That's why coaches in the NFL are such a big deal when it comes to scheme. We're recruiting in, the, in college football is such a big deal. Urban Meyer belongs in college football because it plays to his greatest strength. That is an utterly ridiculous take. Fact. And let me tell you, that, that, that it is not. It's fact. fact. It is an utterly fact. ridiculous take. I tell you what, Dan, Dan Olofsky, you know what? I appreciate you being our first take. Honored to have you. You're doing a great job. But, excuse me, why don't you just leave and go and do and, and call college football games? Why don't you start covering, call, calling NFL football games? Why don't you quit NFL Live, okay? You know what? Because far be it for, to diversify your portfolio. I mean, we just want to take the, we, we just want to take the easy lane. Excuse me. What else does Urban Meyer have to prove? Stay with me. Utah. He started at Bowling Green, uh, uh, you know, Bowling Green State, okay? After that, Utah. 22 and 2 in two years. That's a 91.7% winning percentage. Florida, okay, the 65 and 15, 81%. Ohio State, as you said, 83 yeah. and 9, 90%. 17 years Records at the helm. The man won 85% of his game, three national titles. Good. Like you talked about the nine, you know, the, the recruiting classes. I mean, come on now. What else does he have to prove? What you're basically saying, Dan, is this. That's your lane. You're great at that. Why even try anything else? Did it ever occur to you that because he's so great at what he's done, he mastered the college game? So now let me see what I could do on a pro level, particularly with a talent like Trevor Lawrence. I don't know if you saw this, Dan, but, you know, not only am I hosting First Take and, you know, I cover the NBA. Did you, did you see me hosting Jimmy Kimmel Live? Did you see me? I did. did you see me? I watched did some you, of those late I mean, nights. I, 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 did, yeah. I did late night. I did late yeah. night. Why? Not a bad Cause job. I, not a bad wait, job. Why? Because it ain't easy. It's new. I want to diversify the portfolio yeah. and show my All potential. Right. You you right. sit up there. You're doing your, you're calling college games. You're on Get Up. You're on NFL Live. Now you up here on first take. You diversify your portfolio. Oh, but Urban Meyer, he needs to stay in his lane. He just needs to do this right here. Stop it. That's ridiculous. Let this man show that on a professional level he could do it. Remember when he was going to, when he showed up, when he was on soft knots, not hard knots. I call it soft knots because it was Cowboys. When he was on soft knots. Very disrespectful. You remember, you remember after he finished playing the preseason game against the Cowboys, he went up and shook Mike McCarthy's hand. Yeah. And they were talking for a brief second, and he, and he talked about, ain't no recruiting. I just get to focus on football. I don't have to focus on all of that other stuff. He said that. That's what he said right there on the field. Pay attention to that. All right, two things. When you say, well, you, you should just go call a college game or just, that's me. I'm not, re- I'm not going to be dependent on so many other aspects for my success. Now, Molly, I mean, Mina and Ruddy and Marcus, they make me look way better than I am because they're such good teammates. But I'm in control of how I perform. When you are a coach, you're dependent on the players that are around you okay. for success. That's the difference between your analogy and the reality of coaching. You and you know what Urban Meyer hates more than anything, Stephen A. Losing, 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 losing. losing. You know what he could where he could control it more in college football, not in the NFL. 
But have let you him give him some time play? to explore the NFL level. You got Trevor Lawrence. Have you, you watched build the Jaguars around play? That. It's about building and improving and seeing if you could get it done. Wait, wait, Did wait, you Dan. watch the Jaguars get absolutely mud-holed by the Texans yes, in week one? they don't have much, Dan. It's the oh, first Dan. year. I, a I, have a, I have a question for you, though, Dan. You wouldn't hold it against Urban Meyer in any way if he just jumped ship right now on the Jags when they have Trevor Lawrence and went to the SC job because it's more appealing after two weeks? I would hold it against him. I would not be shocked. He won't do that. If he were to do would it. You, Stephen a, a, would you, Stephen A., would you? Hell yes, I would hold that? it against him. You owe the organization more than that. At least complete your first damn year. At least complete the season. Where USC going? Nowhere. We so guess it, what? That just, if, you, if Urban Meyer said to them, wait until the end of the NFL season, yeah. they do it. They do it. He might. Okay. Well, then come talk to me then. But don't tell me he should leave now. Why? Let him, let, let's see what he got. Let's see what he can do. Let's what happens what if teach? What happens if USC says to him, "Hey, we got to know now. If not, we're going to go to a guy like Mario Cristobal or Jeff Halfley." Or well, good. Well, good luck. Good luck. Maybe with he'll that. say, "Well, when that good doesn't work out, that. give me a call." Good luck with that. He'll right. get over it. The taxes are high in California. <laughs> we'll leave it You'll there, guys. It. Yeah, a lot cheaper in Jacksonville. Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, both taking number one. Both dominated in college in two of the best arms in the league. Who's going to have the better career, though, when it's all said and done? Stay tuned. First take. Browns led by as many as 12 points in week one against the Chiefs, but another comeback win for Patrick Mahomes delivered Baker squad their 17th straight season opening loss, extending the longest streak in NFL history. The other Ohio team, the Bengals, picked up a win in week one by beating the Vikings 27-24 in OT. Former LSU teammates Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase hooked up for 101 yards in a TD. The most receiving yards by a Bengals rookie in a season opener. The Ravens got out to a 14-0 lead against the Raiders but lost 33-27 in OT. It was their first time losing a regular season game with a 14-point lead since 2004 when they were 81-0 and holding a lead that large. Under John Harbaugh, the Steelers beat the Bills 23-16 during their first season opening win. When trailing by 10 points at halftime, it was Big Ben's ninth career win in the season opener, breaking a tie for Terry Bradshaw for the most in a franchise history during the Super Bowl area. Damian Woody, Dan Orlovsky back here with us, guys. Lots of great quarterbacks, obviously, in the AFC North, so it might be time for a little intervention for Stephen A's Steelers. Damian. <sighs> Is Big Ben the worst quarterback in the AFC North? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes. I'm, yeah. Yes. I'm addressing you, Stephen A. Big Ben is the worst quarterback in the AFC North. And the one thing about this division, they got some young dogs at the quarterback position, yeah, okay? Yeah. Joe Burrow. Look, listen, Joe Burrow is a surgeon. Dan, you know this, yeah. watching Joe Burrow. He's an absolute surgeon out there on the football field. His, his whole thing with the Cincinnati yeah. Bengals, can they protect him enough so he can survey the field and do his thing? Case closed with that one, okay? Baker Mayfield, the much maligned Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield right now? Baker Mayfield is playing at a very, very high level. I might say elite level with his accuracy, okay? Don't just harp on the interception. I know everyone's going to talk about that, but if you go back to last year and what Baker Mayfield did in the first game this year against the Kansas City Chiefs, Baker Mayfield has been playing at an elite level, okay? And then Lamar Jackson. Come on, Stephen A. Lamar Jackson, the former league MVP, He's basically um, just putting the whole Baltimore, organi uh, Baltimore Ravens organization on his back. Arguably, bet between him and Kyler Murray, the best dual threat quarterbacks in the National Football League. And where we see Big Ben at, Big Ben, we know he's a Hall of Famer, okay? We know he's a two-time Super Bowl champion. I get all of that. But we're not living in the past right now as it relates to Big Ben when we're talking about Big Ben. We're talking about right here, right now. He is the worst quarterback in the AFC North, period. Mm. Just blasphemy. It's disgusting to listen to you right now. I can't believe these words came out of your mouth. <sighs> Lamar Jackson is electrifying. I'm not going to even argue about that. Mm -hmm. All right? I get what he brings to the table. Mm -hmm. It's just a different dimension. What the hell is Baker Mayfield proving? Now, I know I believe in Baker Mayfield, and I believe that his upside is going to be great, and I think that ultimately he's going to get to where he's going. Got himself in better shape. 
moving better in the pocket, has better pocket presence. He's throwing the football a little bit better. But this dude had the biggest thing about him is that he went from 21 interceptions to eight interceptions last year. Okay, so we understand that there's an upward trajectory that we're paying attention to along with the coaching of Kevin Stefanski, and we give him credit. That don't make him better than Ben. We look at Joe Burrow. He was a rookie last year. He got hurt. He comes back this year, plays against a Minnesota team nobody's bragging about. <laughs> we, did, he, we know he's got an upside, but what has he actually done? Well, you got to be kidding me. I cannot believe the words that are coming out of your mouth. Ben Roethlisberger, that was a bad year last year. That's what a lot of people are saying. Mm-hmm. Threw for over mm-hmm. 4,500 yards, if I remember correctly, or 4,000 yards, if I remember correctly. Had 33 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. I mean, is I mean, just, just, just stop the presses. Get rid of them. Oh, that's straight garbage. What's the matter with y'all? Now, I understand he's older, and I understand that I would want any of those quarterbacks because they're all younger than him, and he's approaching the last year of his career. I get all of that. It could be this year. It could end next year. We don't know yet. But to sit up there right now mm-hmm. and to say, excuse me, mm-hmm. if Ben Roethlisberger, if Ben Roethlisberger, he's not better than anybody in the AFC North. That's, that's right. That's just blasphemous. That's right. It is disrespectful. Y'all are sitting up there living in a the moment. that got some good moments that they give you. Joe Burrow gave you a good moment last year. Your Baker Mayfield. Improved last season, <laughs> had a coach, had the coaching staff, got Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, had Jarvis, Land- has Jarvis Landry, had Odell Beckham Jr. before he went down. Listen, it's just amazing to me how y'all going to just shove aside what Big Ben brings to the table. Y'all going to pay for this. Hold on, you but you, you know what? You're going to pay for this. Before you're going to pay for this. Before, before I let Dan go, you, Dan, you know why he's talking like this? See, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they, they won in Buffalo. So now you probably feel like, Boy, feel oh, yeah, himself. that's what it is. So that's what it is, Dan. They, they beat like, Buffalo in Buffalo. Yeah. That's why you're feeling Wood. this way. Wood, I'm trying to think, is Stephen A. more committed to Big Ben than I am to Carson Wentz? Like, that's what I'm getting the vibe <laughs> yeah. here right now. To know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. He's like, Big Ben's still the best. Stephen A. reason for that, Dan. Yeah. Stephen A. reason for that, Dan. He a. should. It, well, Carson Wentz doesn't warrant the commitment that Ben Roethlisberger warrants. All right. Stephen A., I don't want the other guys. First of all, yes, he's the worst quarterback in the AFC North. And I don't want the other guys because they're younger. I want the other guys because they're better. Now, I'm not sitting here dogging Big Ben saying he can't play. I watched the fourth quarter and the throw to Juju and the throw to Claypool. But if you, I would say this, real talk, Wood. You give me Joe Burrow and you give me, you give Joe Burrow that Pittsburgh Steelers defense. I'm going to say he's going to win a Super Bowl this year. He's a Super Bowl contender this what? year. Mm. I don't feel this that way year? about the Steelers. Mm. This year. If you took Joe Burrow. That's insane. Stephen A. Stephen I have A. got to be kidding me. Stephen A. Real Dan. talk. Stephen I'll A. Stop it. If you put Joe Burrow on the Pittsburgh Steelers, I would sit here, look you dead oh. in the eye, and say they got a chance to win the Super Bowl because I was that impressed with their defense. Mm, that I don't golf. see them yeah. as a Super Bowl contender with Big Ben because the reality is – they're just going to need Big Ben to make a throw or two in the fourth quarter because the defense is so good. But Joe Burrow, and we're going to get into this a little bit in another segment, I believe. Joe Burrow a different cat now. He a different kind of animal. Lamar Jackson on the Pittsburgh – could you imagine Lamar Jackson – on I'm, not Lamar Jackson. I'm not questioning Lamar Jackson. I'm not questioning Lamar Jackson. Give me Baker discuss- Mayfield then. I'm going to toe to toe with you with Baker Mayfield. Really? I've Baker been Mayfield? on with you with Baker we, we Mayfield. We're going to bring up Baker Mayfield. Hmm? We're going to bring up take- Baker Mayfield. Did, was it you? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Was it you on Get Up Monday morning talking about how Baker Mayfield underthrew someone, missed this throw, missed a couple of throws that he should have made? I said, I said, I said you Baker Mayfield was the most accurate quarterback in football on Sunday, Until? except for one throw. That's the okay. reality. Okay, that's the okay. reality. Okay, that's you the said, truth. No, no. You said that. You said that. Correct. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. Y'all said, I'm gonna remember this. I'm going to remember this because I understand I don't have much I don't have much of an argument considering how Ben Roethlisberger looked the last five weeks of the season last year. You're right about that. I don't have much of an argument. Y'all going to pay for this because the Steelers, with the weapons that they have, excuse me, the get the man to protect, get the man to, well, excuse me, Chase Claypool ain't a weapon. Chase Claypool with, he, with, 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 with uh, Deontay Johnson, with James Washington, with Juju Smith-Schuster, that's not weapons for you? That's not weapons I, for you? I'm taking the, I'll, I'll take the Bengals' weapons and I'll take the Browns' weapons over them. Well, okay. All right. I, I, listen, yep. I'm not going to argue about that, but what I'm going to say to you is this. There's enough weapons there, and you look at Big Ben Roethlisberger, I'm going to watch Baker Mayfield, and I'm going to watch Joe Burrow, who I believe in both of them. But to sit up there and say that right now. They're better. They They're are better, better yeah. than yeah. Ben Roethlisberger, and he's the yeah. worst quarterback Let, in the AFC. Stephen A. Y'all going to pay for this. Let me Y'all get you right here. I'm going to get you right here. I'm going to make you quiet right here. Give me one thing. 
one thing that Ben Roethlisberger can do that those other cats can't. Excuse me. I think he could throw the football better in clutch situations than they do, they can at times. Me personally, I've seen him do it. Uh, I haven't let seen me him help do you. It. Let me help you. I haven't he, seen him do it. Let me help you. He has, more, he has more experience. Hold, wait a minute. That's wait a minute. Hold he's on. got more Joe experience. Joe Burrow than hasn't the other been guy. in that situation yet on a professional level. And don't get me started with Baker Mayfield. I mean, okay. You, you okay. haven't shown me that yet? Stephen A., one question for you. Of all what? those AFC North quarterbacks on Sunday, which one had the worst QBR and the worst completion percentage? I wasn't paying attention. I'm assuming you're going to tell me, Ben, because of Buffalo. No, okay. yes. You weren't paying attention. <laughs> yes. Yes. You watched that game so closely. You had, a, you had a friend. You had the kids. You had the family. He wasn't paying attention, though. I was paying attention. Oh, I was paying attention oh, to my defense and special teams having to come through. Oh, you didn't notice because, 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 again, because, because, again, you got what? too many oh, questions hey, with your hey. offensive line. That's what I was hold paying on, attention to. Hold on. Dan Orlovsky, I need a breakdown. Can we get a telestration of this debate? I just want a breakdown of I'm this wrong. particular I'm debate I'm by Stephen A. I'll have that done by 4 o'clock today. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Can't wait. Do it on the NFL Live set. <laughs> I wouldn't pay the attention. All right. Let's leave it there, guys. Uh, when we come back here on First Take, Tom Brady with well, some say surprising sound. All the rookie quarterbacks, you, you might want to say that. Does Teflon Tom miss playing his old quarterback rival? Stephen A's thoughts on that next. It's First Take. We're having fun. Stay here. Today, oh, yeah. National okay. Championship. Okay. First take okay. will be there. Okay. Danny right. Haley going to hang a banner in a couple years. Stephen oh, A. will okay. be yes. on here. Right. Gamble Stor- will be there. Stores. How do you get to stores, Connecticut? I don't even know. 84. I don't even know. The 3 I, don't even know. I have no idea. We get I have no service. idea. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, the future of the NFL looks bright at the quarterback spot. So many young players stepping into roles. Tom Brady's noticed that trend, too. He recently said this on the Let's Go podcast. I don't remember this many rookies playing. Gone are the, we talked about this, Dan. Gone are the days of Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, Philip Rivers, Eli Manning. You know, those are the guys I'm used to hearing about. So, Dan, the question is this: Which do you prefer, the young guns or the veteran quarterbacks? I, I prefer the veteran quarterbacks. The guys, I, I, as athletic as the position has become, at the end of the day, it's always going to be about who can crush you with their arm in their mind. That's going to be the consistent greatness is what guy is going to be able to figure out what the defense is doing, know exactly what their offense needs to do, and kill you with it. That's the reality is I can do whatever. We're watching Tom Brady constantly do it. You guys remember the Gronk touchdown pass that he had the other night, the second yeah. one? Not the rollout, but the one where he's at the line of scrimmage, he checks in, he dumps it off to Gronk. That's always going to be the difference. You know, Patrick, everyone raves about Patrick Mahomes' physical ability, and I love it as well, but I'll stand on the table saying he is as mentally as good as any young quarterback that we have in the game right now, certainly in his fifth season or his fourth season that we've had come in as a young player. So those guys that are able to just constantly be operators, insurgents, the athleticism has made them difference makers, no doubt. But to be great over 10, 12, 15 plus years, it is going to be about the operation and the the mental aspect of it. And until those young kids really start to dominate in that way, like we watched Phillip dominate for such a long time, or Eli in in certain moments, Peyton, Tom, I'll always take those old heads because they kind of played quarterback the way I feel is always going to be the separator, and that's the mental part of it. Well, the operative word is preference. Which do you prefer? And I would say I prefer the young guns. And when I think about a Patrick Mahomes, of course I watch him throw the football and throw no-look passes and fling the football at an elite level. But we've also seen him make great plays with his legs, his scrambling ability. Um, I, I love to see that. I think about Lamar Jackson, how electrifying he is. We've never seen a dude, not even Michael Vick, run the football from the quarterback position the way that he, the way that he does. I remember when Deshaun Watson was playing, and we miss him tremendously no this season because of all that he's going through, obviously, and, and, and we'll see how that pans out. But Deshaun Watson, as great as he was at Clemson and as great as he's been coming into the NFL and flinging that football, we'd actually elevate his level of notoriety if it were not for Patrick Holmes because that's how big time he is. Mm-hmm. It ain't just his throwing ability. It's his ability to run with the football. It's the opportunity. 